bridge current also is going to be significant. We have to take both into account. All right. So uh, when would you have diffusion? So far, we have seen that doping was very uniform, right? I mean, EC was con uh, so the density was constant all the time. Okay. Whenever you have density constant, dn by dx is going to be zero. So diffusion is not diffusion is not going to be there. The only time when your diffusion is going to be there is when you have non-uniform doping. Let's say you put uh, different amounts of ND in different locations of semiconductor, or you put N-type and P-type together and things like that. So that's when diffusion is going to happen. If you have a simple uniform doping, you're not going to have diffusion. All right. So here, we would like to consider what happens when non-uniform doping exists. Okay. So uh, this is ND. ND basically NI exponential EF minus you know, EI by KT. Okay. This is it. I deliberately wrote EI as a function of X because you will see in the end that there's going to be a gradient in the electric field. Sorry, gradient in the bands, which will be electric field. That's why I deliberately wrote EI as a function of X. So essentially, what uh, consider a situation here, wherein you have some semiconductor dope with donors. So you have some e electrons here. Let's say this is your uh, N is high in this region. And here, N is low. OK, so what would happen? it would essentially lead to diffusion of carriers, what we have seen before, right? So from high concentration, electrons will diffuse in the positive x direction, right? In plus x direction. How long will they diffuse? Is it continuously till everything is, you know, all the electrons are gone? Well, what happens when you have a electron diffusing away from one location will be left with a positive charge. So essentially, let's imagine if this electron has moved, right? This electron has moved, it will leave behind a positive charge in its uh, original location. Similarly, positive charges will be left behind in these locations, wherever electron has moved, okay? So whenever this happens, you have a sort of a gradient in the charge, space charge, okay? That results in electric field. So in this case, you'll see that there will be a electric field in the positive x direction, okay? Well, uh, yes, electric field in the positive x direction because it's greater amount of positive charge on the left side and the lower amount of positive charge on the right side. So there's going to be a difference in the charge and that's why there's an electric field. So whenever you have a built-in field like this, the field will oppose the flow of current, right? So basically here, if you have a field like this, electron has to go in opposite direction, right? So, Diffusion essentially, diffusion, diffusion of uh, N leads to what we call as fixed or space charge, by which we mean essentially uh, the carriers, the do dopant atoms are exposed. Essentially, you remove an electron, you'll be left with a positive charge. Okay. So that's a fixed charge that cannot move that we have saw we have seen in the previous cases where the fixed uh, the dopant atoms cannot move they're bonded to the lattice so they are uh, yeah fixed so basically fixed lead to a fixed charge and we can immediately compute what is the electric field associated with the fixed charge mm -hmm. we can apply gauss law and calculate this we will do it later but uh, right now uh, essentially we will uh, a built-in field is created we are saying it's a built-in field because it's actually coming from the, the dope and distribution in the lattice. Okay. And at some point, this built-in field, I mean, essentially built-in field opposes. So if initially there will be a huge concentration gradient, creating some flow of current, diffusion current. But at some point, the diffusion field, uh, diffusion, uh, sorry, the built-in field opposes the diffusion process and an equilibrium is reached. Okay. Uh, e opposes and diffusion, okay, implies uh, equilibrium is rich. Okay. This is what happens physically. How, how much is electric field? You could actually compute that, no? Because from the expression here, given here, you could write EF minus EI is going to be KT times ln of ND by NI, right? And we know that electric field is simply 
derivative of the EI. So we could actually take DEI by DX and this is going to be negative so I will push it to the other side is equal to minus KT ln of ND by NI is going to be uh, NI by ND and then you have to take the derivative inside so that is going to be 1 over NI times ND. Well, no, no, not ND, sorry, we are taking DE by DX, right? So, this is going to be DND by DX, right? So, essentially, this NI will go out. What you will end up getting is, uh, am I right? Yes, looks like I am right. KT, 1 over, one over ND, KT by ND, I will say, to DND by DX. Alright, and if this is there, electric field is simply going to be right? electric field is simply 1 over Q DEI by DX that is going to be equal to minus KT by Q 1 over ND times DND by DX. So, this is going to be a built in field. Okay, this is an expression for that. Well, you could uh, do a sanity check. What happens if you have uniform doping? Right? Uniform doping implies d and d by dx is going to be zero. That implies e is equal to zero. No built-in field. Okay. All right. So this is how we can analyze. And let's take an example, you know, okay, uh, what happens if you have, how will the band diagram look like when you have a non-uniform doping? So, this is what it, it will be. So, essentially, you have, uh, it's an equi it's a process in equilibrium, so EF is going to be constant. Okay. EF is constant or uniform, EF is uniform maybe, or that's better, uniform because uh, equilibrium, right? So sample is in equilibrium, so it has to be constant. And then what it tells you is E is not going to be zero. Okay. And the band diagram essentially if E is positive, essentially bands will move upwards. Right here, move, they're moving upwards here, essentially indicating that electric field is positive. Okay. And then the distance from E C and E F is going to be your carry density. In this case, you have high carry density here, right? N is high. Here n is low. Okay, you should be able to see that, you know, because EF is farther away from EC, the concentration is low. Okay, so there's a built-in field which is positive here. Well, I mean, we could try to uh, check out this. Okay, so in this case, you have E not equal to zero. So basically, there is some minus KT by Q, one over ND times D and D by DX. This is equal to be a built-in field. Let's take an example. So here, okay, I, I could have should have fired anyway. So this is a n-type semiconductor at temperature uh, equal to 300. Remember always these diffusion coefficients, mobility, everything will depend on temperature. Okay. So nd is given as some exponential function. And the length of the semiconductor is given. You are asked to calculate the induced electric field at x equal to 0 and x equal to 10 power minus 4 centimeters. Well, it's fairly straightforward. We have the expression. So if you calculate d and d, by dx, it's going to be, well, I'll do, uh, okay, yeah, this is going to be 10 power 16 10 power minus x by L times minus 1 by L, right? So, E is going to be minus or minus plus, it will become plus KT by Q times uh, 1 over ND, so that will cancel out. So, basically, I'll be left with 1 over L, okay? So, this is going to be your uh, electric field, built-in electric field. You could substitute, you know, KT is basically going to be, KT by Q is going to be uh, 0 0.0259 divided by L2 2 into 10 power minus 2 centimeters. 2 into 10 power minus 2 centimeters. We should always do it in centimeters. Okay. That's how the convention is. Okay. In semiconductors, length, we don't use meters, but we are using centimeters all the time. Okay. So then you calculate this and then you estimate how much it's going to be. So it's going to be 10 power 2, so 2.59 by 2, 
volts per centimeter. Okay. Will this depend on the position B? Basically, x equal to n power minus four. Please check it out whether this is going to depend on the position. Okay. So yeah. So this is how you'll uh, deal with uh, semiconductors which are in uh, having non-uniform doping. And this is a very common thing because whenever we make a p-n junction, we have non-uniform doping. Whenever we make a MOS cap, we have a non-uniform. I mean, whether, well, yeah, uh, you have of course an insulator in between, but non-uniform doping is there. It's very very common. Okay. So, uh, well, yeah, I've been telling you many many times that uh, band diagrams are very useful for uh, analyzing how a semiconductor behaves. So, I, I'm going to put this as part of a homework problem. Okay. But uh, let me just quickly tell you. Essentially, what we are showing is some hypothetical structure again. Okay, this is a hypothetical band diagram. It's never going to be like this. Okay, so from minus L to L, there are this EC, EV that is shown here, EI is shown here, and EF is going to be constant. So basically, the first question you are asked is, is a semiconductor in equilibrium? Well, it is in equilibrium because EF is constant. Right, that's why it is in equilibrium. What is the electric field in the regions? No, minus L to L. Well, electric field is going to be uh, what? Electric field is size one over Q d e i by d x. I mean, sometimes I write it as d e c by d x, d e v by e x. It doesn't matter. All all of them are parallel. Remember, if they are not parallel, then E G is going to change, and that is not going to be a realistic situation for semiconductor uh, normal devices. So there's going to be a basically electric field which is uh, let me see. I'll draw it first. I'll draw an axis, and then I'll take a see. Okay. So this is my electric field. It's going to be in this uh, minus L to zero. The gradient is downwards, so electric field is negative. D E by D X is going to be negative. What is the magnitude of the uh, electric field? You could easily estimate, actually. Let's say I assume that uh, let's assume this is two microns. I'll put it on top. So that's space. So let's assume this is two micrometers. Okay. So what will be the electric field? So electric field is always going to be uh, d e i by d e x, right? Let's assume you know. Uh, Let me take e g equal to for simplifying calculations. Uh, okay, well, e g equal to one point two e v. Okay. So essentially, what we are saying is, this change in the bands right here, this part is going to be delta change in the e c is going to be e g by three, right? So. Electric field gradient is this, this. This is going to be. I'm assuming that okay. This is very very close. So this distance, I'm assuming it to be e g by three. Okay. Energy changes e g by three. So d e i is going to be no. D e i. This is going to be one over q times d e i is going to be e g by three, which is going to be point four into e v right. So I'll put a q here. Divided by x is going to be uh, one one micrometer, so that will be one into ten power minus four centimeters. Okay, so if you do that, uh, it is turning out to be Q will cancel out. So this is going to be four into ten power three volt per centimeter. You see. There can be a significant amount of electric field in the semiconductor. That's all I just wanted to prove. Okay, because your dx is going to be small, you can have large electric fields. Okay, so electric field can be plotted as here, from here to here, you have minus four uh, into ten power three volts per centimeter, and then from zero to L, it is a positive electric field. So I'm going to plot it like this. This is going to be L. This is going to be L minus L. Okay. So this is the profile of your electric field. 
Okay. In real cases, of course, you're, you're not going to get a, a sharp profile like this. There'll be something else. We'll talk about it later. And then what is the kinetic energy of electrons and uh, holes identified by the numbers? One, two, three. Okay. That's going to be interesting because uh, we said that whenever the electron is at the band edge, it's going to have a kinetic energy of zero. Right. So you can, you can actually do this analysis. Uh, I'll post probably even a solution for this and you, okay, let me see. So position one, two, and three, right? For electrons, okay, KE, right? Electrons, uh, KE, okay, KE is going to be zero here at position one. At position three also, KE is going to be zero. At position two, if you assume that that difference is EG by three, it's going to be K is going to be, if you, the bands are bent by EG by 3, then it will be approximately EG by 3. Okay? That's a higher kind. So, electron has got kinetic energy as it travels. Okay? What about potential energy? Well, potential energy, I mean, you have to basically consider reference. So, PE, PE of uh, electrons, we said is going to be EC, not approximately, it's going to be EC. minus E reference, okay? This reference, you can take it as, you know, this equal to EF, you can take it. There's no harm, okay? So basically the distance from EF, okay? So it's going to be high. And then as, as, once you go to put, uh, position three, you're going to have low, okay? Uh, e, I'll just write it as P equal to zero. I'll just assume that EC was almost at EF. It's close, very close, okay? A few KT difference, but let's take it to be equal to. And then this was going to be EG by 3 then. And this is going to be again, you know, it's still, it doesn't change. So this is again going to be 0. So you can write out, uh, this is potential energy. E is going to be 0, EG by 3. Okay. So you can analyze this way uh, for holes also. But just remember that for holes, potential energy, I mean, the energy increases in the downward direction. And electrons energy increases in the upward direction. There is a lot of subtlety here. You may not follow the uh, all the details. It's okay because uh, you see that at position two, you wonder about energy conservation. You might say, you know, where is how is energy conservation being satisfied? So uh, it's a little bit tricky. So we will discuss this when we discuss in detail, you know, some uh, later at a later date. Okay, but at this point, I want you to be able to look at a band diagram and identify, you know, if the electron has kinetic energy zero or non-zero, what is the electric field in different locations of the uh, band diagram, okay? So, potential energy, we will again talk about it when we talk of potential barriers. Right now, I would say potential energy, you, I mean, you can take it as a uh, information, you can just think about it. We will again come back and then revisit this topic, all right? So, uh, so with that, I would like to stop. We are almost uh, getting close to one hour. So, what we did today was essentially we started out with uh, electric semiconductor in electric field. We talked about you know how the bands bend when you have an electric field, you have a gradient, and then we talked about uh, diffusion of carriers, which can happen whenever you have non-uniform doping in semiconductors, and then you talked about how the uh, total current we can write in terms of the diffusion current and the drift current. And then we established one important fact that the Fermi energy is going to be uniform or constant in a semiconductor at equilibrium. And then we talked about, uh, we derived Einstein relation, which is a very, very important relation that we will use multiple times in the course. So typically, you know, your gate and all these exams, you will get an, a problem based on that. Okay. We did that. And also, you know, uh, well, I didn't mention, I had left the last question here. That equilibrium carry densities and not be not you can determine once you know how much is the distance from of ef from ec you will be able to determine what it is okay so please try out these things i'll meet you in the next lecture where we will talk about uh, minority carriers and non-equilibrium situations okay so next two lectures will be again we'll introduce some concepts and with that we will have a strong foundation necessary for us to understand pn junctions and further
All right. So thank you so much for your attention. I'll look forward to seeing you in the next lecture. Thank you very much.